Good morning, and welcome to the next installment of the Sermon on the Mount series. And today we're getting into Matthew chapter 6, and boy, it's been a wonderful time studying this sermon, and I'm getting a blessing out of it, just the digging deeper and, and the challenges that I've been bringing to you haven't been one-sided. It challenges me as well, and that's what the Word of God does for us. It challenges us to live better, to be better, to be born again, to have that relationship with Jesus Christ and with God the Father. And the thing that I really, I really feel like God is impressing throughout this whole thing is let's make some changes. If you're not a Christian, we have so much more that that we can live in our lives for. You know, uh, when I when I became a Christian almost 31 years ago, I was wondering if that was all there was to it. And when I asked God for help, and I was absolutely 100% sincere, he made a way. And I am here today because 31 years ago, he saw someone that needed hope, that needed help, and God delivered right on time. And it is no accident that the the apostle Matthew is recorded this entire sermon in the amount of detail that he did and as we go through this it just becomes more and more amazing the level of detail that Matthew records here and the importance of the things that Jesus says not just in his time period, but even in our own. I mean, we look at the at the moral decay in our own country, in in our modern age, and and you know, some things haven't changed. We still need God. And Jesus, if we were to make a title for Matthew chapter six. I would say that Matthew chapter 6 could be called living for God versus living for self. And we'll start here in Matthew chapter 6 verse 1. And Jesus says, Take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. And there are a number of writers that, you know, get into the the deep things of the scriptures, and, and many of them agree that when Jesus, in this particular verse, not in the subsequent verses, but in this particular verse, Jesus is talking about righteousness, doing your righteousness. Now, we're all saved by grace, and it's not of works, lest any man should boast, as Paul said. But, and when we look at James, he says, show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you mine by my works. So we have a job to do. There are things that we must do as Christians, as born-again believers. We're not supposed to just take a back seat. We're supposed to be very active in, in our communities, in our churches, you know, even on the job site, uh, obviously there are some things that, that need to be done with wisdom and, and in decency and in order, but at the same time, we have a job to do, and that's to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to the lost and dying world. But what, the, what these writers here are saying is that Jesus is referring to doing our righteousness, doing those things of righteousness, those things which have a heavenly origin. Praying, giving, 
fasting, various other things of that nature. These are things that when they come from heaven, when they are, when their source is from heaven, and when we are not trying to do it for our own personal gain, for any personal uh, attention, if you will, we have a reward with God. God is not unrighteous that he won't reward us for the things that we do for him. When we're not trying to take any kind of credit for anything, you know, he when he gets all the glory and God deserves every bit of the glory for everything, even when things seemingly go wrong, we give him the glory anyway because why? Because he has a better plan. And we may not understand what that plan is in this moment. And things may seem dark and dismal in this moment. But God has a better plan. And God is in control of all things. Let me say that again. God is in control of all things. Don't be deceived. Don't let the liars and the mockers and, and the degenerates deceive you into thinking that things are bleak and dismal. Because if you're a born-again Christian, we have a hope that's greater than anything that can possibly happen in this world. So you don't have to be hopeless just because maybe an election didn't go your way or maybe you didn't get that job you wanted or whatever the situation may be. We are not a people without hope. We are a people with a fantastic hope that the world didn't give us and the world can't take away from us. So in, in, in this verse, Jesus is, we could say that Jesus is perhaps introducing his next subject of discourse, which as you know we explained earlier, we could title this living for God versus living for self. And when we live for self, we don't get the reward of God because we've already got what we said we wanted. But when we live for God, when we do everything for the glory of God and, and let him get all the glory and, and eschew the glory for our own selves, he will glorify us. He will lift us up. He will reward us. And even if it's not reward in this life, the life to come. Oh, brothers and sisters, let me tell you, there is so many wonderful things waiting for us. If we just submit to God and let him be the order of our lives, you can have this life this joy, this hope. And if you're not a Christian, today is a great day to start. I want to invite you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if you are a Christian, and maybe you're feeling a little down, a little hopeless today, renew, renew your connection with God. That is the source of hope and true joy. And as always, we love you. And God loves you. We're praying for you. Have a fantastic week in the Lord.